Hey everyone, my name is Ed and in this video I'm going to be going over the FTC robot side of the control system. Specifically, that's going to be the FTC control hub and the FTC expansion hub. So I want to talk about how to configure those, how to set those up, how to wire them, and what each device kind of does. And in future videos I will go over how to actually program and control the robot. So that's it, let's get into it. This right here is the Rev Control Hub, and it is basically the brain of the robot. It does a few things. It creates a Wi-Fi network that we connect to to control the robot. It runs our code, and it also is what we actually connect our motors, sensors, servos, and so on to. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see we have spot for four motors with encoders. On the bottom, we have spots for six servos. And on the right-hand side, we have a number of ports for communication and for sensors. And here we have the Rev Expansion Hub. It looks basically the same, same number of motor ports, same number of servo ports, same number of communication and sensor ports. You must have the Rev Control Hub for your robot to function. This is what's running the code, this is required to for your robot to be functional. You only need the Expansion Hub if you filled up some of the ports on the Control Hub and you need more. So for example, if I filled up all my motor ports here and I want to add another motor, I could add an Expansion Hub and get uh, some more motors here. A question I often get is, hey, I, I'm borrowing a driver hub, I'm borrowing a laptop, am I am I out of luck? Do, how do I actually work with my robot? As long as you have a laptop, you can connect to this over Wi-Fi and program it. And as long as you have any driver hub, you can again connect to this over Wi-Fi and drive it. Now that I've explained both of these components, what we're gonna do is actually show you how to wire this up. Now the minimum components you're going to need are a battery, a power switch, and your control hub. You can also use the expansion hub if you need. To start, I'm gonna strap in a battery. We need to take this and connect it up to our switch. Now in this case, because I have this yellow connector, I can just take an extension wire, because mine's a little short, and I connect it up to my switch. It only goes the other one way, so if it's not going in, try the other end of the cable, or try flipping the cable around. If you're using a cable with this kind of an end, you can get these adapter cables that connect to this. And then you have this yellow connector and you can connect it into the rest of your robot. Do your best to grab the housing and pull the housings apart and push together by the housings. If we pull on the wire, what we're actually gonna do is start stressing the connection inside that housing and the wire can actually separate. That's actually a major problem I've seen with these types of batteries. The wire can actually come out of the housing and break your battery. So now the other end of our switch is gonna connect into our control hub. Now my wire is too short, so I'm going to use another extension. And now our power input is gonna go into the top port. And again, if, uh, if, this, is, if this doesn't go in, try flipping around, try going the other end of the cable. It only goes in one way. Next, to power the expansion hub, I'm gonna take a cable from the secondary port just below here and run it to the input right there. So I'll get another cable, plug in that end, and plug in there. The final connection is gonna be a communication cable between the control hub and the expansion hub. Now here's what that cable looks like. It is blue, white, and black, and it's got this keyed three pin connector here. Both ends of the cable are identical. Now there's a little port down here labeled RS-485. We're gonna take the cable and connect from this one over to the same port on this side. Plug it in there, and we'll plug the other end into the same port. There. So now we should have power coming into the device, passing through to the other device, and a communication cable running between them. Now that's all for wiring up these devices alone. All the other electrical connections are going to depend on your robot. So I've got four drive motors and an arm motor. I'll show you how to wire up this example in another video. A couple other things that are worth doing is taking any loose bundles of cable and tucking them in or zip tying them or otherwise securing them down on the robot somewhere. This prevents a whole mass of cables from coming out of your robot, getting caught in other robots or the field, and generally having a bad time. The final note I want to share with you on the wiring is this connection right here is very often a little loose. So this cable doesn't really fit in here very snugly. This can potentially come loose. A good way of preventing that is to take a little bead of hot glue and throw a bead right along that seam after plugging it in. Hold it there for a minute, let it cool, and that'll help make sure that connection does not come apart. The same thing is true on this one. This port is pretty loose sometimes, so a little bead of hot glue goes a long way. 
So now that we have the control hub and expansion hub actually wired up, the next step is to connect to them through the Rev Hardware Client and make sure they have all the settings they need. So we'll go ahead and launch the Rev Hardware Client. You can download the Rev Hardware Client from RevRobotics.com. I found this just by Googling Rev Robotics Hardware Client and I clicked on the installation. So next I'm gonna plug in the control hub via USB. And I'll go ahead and click on my control hub. If this doesn't come up, try clicking scan for devices or try unplugging the USB cable uh, from your computer or the control hub and plugging it in a few times. That usually gets it to show up. So the first thing I'll see here is if I go to update, all of my stuff is out of date. So I'm just gonna click update to latest version. And this is gonna take a few minutes. You'll need to make sure you're connected to internet when you do this. So we'll let this run. Yes, we'll update anyway. And give this a minute and come back when it's done. Okay, that all seems to be done now. That took uh, about 10 minutes, although I did restart this one because it was kind of acting up. So the next thing I want to talk about is the Program and Manage tab. So if we click on that, we can see some basic information about a robot. We can see the robot's name, in this case, FTC-Motor City Alliance. And we can see this password uh, is for the network. So this robot creates its own Wi-Fi network. And we can see if we go to the Wi-Fi here, that would be our robot. We can connect to it just like any other network by typing that password. To change any of this or to find out this information, we can also go to manage. We can change the name of our robot here. We can change the password. So the question I often get is, hey, uh, we're borrowing someone's driver hub and we can't connect to the robot. We don't know the robot's password. Well, all you have to do is connect over USB and click on the program manage and write the information down that's there. If we click on blocks, we can see the programs that are currently loaded on the robot. I have one here. I will cover programming and blocks in another video. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. I plan on covering additional topics in the future. If there's anything in particular you want to see, let me know and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, take care.